and welcome back everyone to the video series Dedicate Show on MTV where we are so close to the finals everybody can almost taste it. That's right, we're talking about The Challenge, Season 37, Spies, Lies, and Allies, Episode 17. We are getting down to the wire. But let's start off where last episode left off, and that was Emmy winning against Big T in the elimination, staying with Sapphire, and coming back to the challenge house. Everyone gives Emmy a round of applause, but we quickly move into the next day where everybody has the finals on their mind and what it would mean to them to make the finals and to win. We first talk to CT where he knows nobody wants to see him in the finals, but he moves on to a conversation with his wife and his son, and he is thinking that this is going to be a great opportunity. I have a great shot of winning back-to-back -back challenge season, and winning back-to-back -back seasons would really cement his challenge legacy. We move on to Emmanuel and Tori talking in the backyard, and Emmanuel talks about if he could make it to the finals, that would be great. If he could win, it would be amazing to help out his family and to move to LA, where Tori talks about how she really struggled after her and Jordan had split up, but her making it to the finals and winning would really just make everything that she went through worth it because she knew that she could come out the other side a bigger and stronger person. Then we move to the billiards room where Devin is talking about CT and how he is super valuable to a lot of people left in this game. That he won't be called down to the elimination because nobody wants to face him in the elimination and also everybody wants to run the finals with him and Kyle's like, yeah, that's why I'm over on Sapphire. Then we move back to Devin who is getting nervous in the game because it is a guy's day coming up and he knows that his neck could be on the chopping block. He has tried to play a perfect political game, but with options running low, he's thinking that if Emerald does not win the next daily, it could be doom for him. We move on to the kitchen where Nelson and Logan are talking about the Ruby woes and that it was very minimal mistakes that were happening, but mistakes that cost them those daily challenge wins and that if they could really focus and win the next daily challenge, that the trio could be a really tough team coming into these finals, but it's key to win the next daily challenge. And speaking of the daily challenge, everybody gets on their gear, heads down to meet TJ near the water for this week's daily challenge called Dead Drop, where we have this gauntlet in the air where there's capsules on one side. And so a team will be going one at a time. They'll be running across this gauntlet to grab a capsule and bring it back to the other side. The other teams will be on the one side of the gauntlet trying to sabotage them by throwing these balls on the string to try to knock the capsule either out their hand or knock them off with a capsule in their hand because that would be a dead capsule. The team that can transfer the most capsules the quickest will win into the agency, win power, win safety, and will be that much closer to the finals. Now I have to say that I like this daily challenge. I love the placement of it because it's so close to the end of the game that everybody is going 100 miles an hour. They're trying their hardest to stay safe, to keep their teams intact, that everybody is giving 100% and everybody on the side trying to sabotage everybody is giving 100% to try to really mess up everybody. The first team up is Sapphire and CT just takes over. He is a machine. The T in CT has to stand for the Terminator because CT puts the team on his back, which I think both Emmy and Kyle wants him to do in the finals because both Kyle and Emmy were struggling. Kyle was losing capsules left and right. He was falling off. We had Emmy crying in the beginning, not wanting to even start. At one point, CT was like, we need all the capsules we can. I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna run with it. And he was going back and forth, grabbing all the capsules he could. He got seven capsules by himself. Absolutely a beast. Wanting to do anything to keep himself safe, heading into the next guy's day elimination. So CT absolutely crushes this. Ruby is up and I was thinking, okay, there's three strong players. I think that they could actually do some good in this daily challenge, but it was a mess. I mean, Nelson was doing his best Nehemiah impersonation. We had Tori getting smashed by Emmanuel and Amanda just absolutely getting crushed by these balls. And then we had Logan who was doing his best to try to get as many capsules. He gets two at the end of the day and the rest of the capsules are lost by the sea and Ruby only gets two capsules. So it comes down to Emerald. 
And what I loved about this daily challenge is that everybody was out to sabotage Emerald. I'm surprised Devin didn't bring up friendship and taking this as a personal shot that everybody was trying to sabotage him. We get to see Emerald not do as well as they were trying to tout themselves as the best team all season. We had the first five people to do this gauntlet for Emerald all fall into the water. We have Amanda out first who falls off right before he gets to the capsule portion part. We had Amanda just jumping right off from the beginning. Nani was able to walk across, but everybody was waiting for her to grab a capsule to then unleash their fury on her, which once she figured that out, she was like, there's no way I'm doing this. So she jumps into the water. Then we have Casey who falls into the water, which was Shocking to me. I thought she was gonna be able to get across this pretty easily, but she has some struggles. And then Emmanuel is able to get up the ladder and run across again, but he falls again into the water. They're losing valuable time. Devin finally gets things going by getting a capsule over. And I will say that Devin does a good job in this daily challenge. And so he starts picking it up for Emerald. Then we have Casey getting some capsules over and Emmanuel. Amanda had trouble just getting up the ladder, but once she got up the ladder, she got cracked good by Tori and then she falls into the water. Despite their rocky start, Emerald is able to pick things up and grab seven capsules themselves. However, because they had so many people fall in the middle of it and CT was able to just go back and forth as quickly as possible, just being a one man army, Sapphire is able to win because they got seven capsules the quickest. CT and Kyle and Emmy are just on cloud nine. I'm sure Kyle is just feeling ecstatic because he swapped over to the Sapphire team. He was able to win, stay safe, and nobody celebrates more than Kyle coming back to the challenge house, calling everybody losers. He's doing his best Jim Carrey impersonation, going, la who, the her. Now to add to the aesthetic that we are close to the finals and that the finals are right around the corner, everybody gets dressed up to head down to the docks to get a nice sunset by the sea fancy dinner. And everybody's having a grand old time. We move over to the Emerald team talking and a lot of the players think that Devin is going to be safe from the agency vote, but they don't know about Emmanuel because Emerald does have the most players and Emmanuel is the only rookie to not see an elimination. So they don't know exactly where Emmanuel stands with the Sapphire team. We move on to the Ruby team where don't think that they are safe at all and that Sapphire could take a shot at them in this agency vote. We move on to the nomination ceremony, which is the most boring nomination ceremony of the season. I was really, really disappointed by this nomination ceremony because we get in there and Devin talks about the friendship thing. He leans on the friendship argument again. And then he says that, hey, just know that if I do get called down there, I can turn it on. I will give it all I got. And I think he means that if there's a giant light bright station down there in the elimination that he will turn on all those lights. So be worried if there's a giant light bright. Nelson talks about how he doesn't want to be the agency vote, but he will do anything down in the elimination to win and to make it to the finals and that he would die down there. And then Emmanuel talks about how if they're thinking about voting him, please change your mind. And when CT says why, Emmanuel just freezes up. And this is exactly what happens for the rest of the nominations. Nobody says anything and I get it. They don't wanna throw anybody under the bus because if the agency does pick that person that somebody was talking smack about, then that person has a really good reason to call you down into the elimination. But I'm with Amanda, I wanna see blood. If this is the final men's elimination, heck, if this is the final elimination right before the finals, throw out everything you can to keep yourself safe. Why are you just sitting there in silence? And even CT is like, guys, I need something, please. This if. You need to speak up if you want to really save yourself because it's coming down to a Manuel or Logan being the compromised agent here. And so one of you needs to start stepping it up and really speak your piece if you want to be out of the elimination and not the agency vote. But it is dead silent. I couldn't believe myself. This was so ridiculous. And before anybody speaks up, that's when TJ comes in and says, hey, now you got to make your vote. The compromised agent is Logan. To my surprise, I thought it could be Emmanuel. I thought the whole Seafoam Periwinkle truce was gonna be over. And because they had more numbers, I thought CT would wanna take a shot at the Emerald team, despite that they're supposed to have an alliance against Ruby, but they stay strong in voting in Logan on the Ruby team. And also Emmy wants to keep Emmanuel safe. And I guess she has a lot of pull with CT and CT was cool with keeping Emmanuel in the game. So they vote in Logan. Now post vote, everyone's having burgers and we see the Ruby team talking and Nelson 
brings up that they had a talk before the nominations that, hey, we said that we weren't going to call each other down if we were the agency vote. And he wants to double down like, hey, please keep to your word and don't call each other down. And Tori wants to be like, hey, if you win the elimination, come back to Ruby and us trio could really work hard and get through this together. We move to Devin, who is nervous. He doesn't think that Logan will call him down, but there's always that possibility. And if there is something that has to do with speed or endurance, he's most likely going to be called down because he's the best shot to win against. Now we move over to Emmanuel, who looks nervous sitting in this bed next to Tori. He looks nervous. And all I can think in this moment is, where's that chicken dance? Come on now, Emmanuel, where's that confidence where you're calling Kyle a chicken for not calling you into the elimination? Now you have a good shot of going down to the elimination and you're kind of shaking in the knees. I kind of like seeing everybody like a little nervous this episode, especially Devin and Emmanuel on the Emerald team. I love to see them nervous because they were talking so much smack this season about how they were doing so well and how they were the best. Now it comes down to brass tacks and everybody's just like quivering a little bit and I love to see it. Now let's head down to the lair to meet up with TJ where there TJ calls down Logan and Logan has to make a decision. Now we look at the elimination grounds and we see that there is a timer, there are two levers, there's a rocket in the middle of the elimination grounds. We're trying to figure out what's going to happen and Logan makes his choice and he decides he's going to go up against a Manuel. Now, TJ says that this elimination game is called Rocket Run, where both men will start on one side of the layer, make their way to the other side to flip the lever, and then make their way to flip the second layer at the starting point. You have to hop over the rocket as you make your way to each lever. Now, as I mentioned, there's a timer in the layer and it says 15 seconds. You have to flip both levers within the 15 seconds or you're eliminated. The first man to not flip their lever within the time frame would lose the elimination and leave the game so close to the finals. Instantly hearing the rules, I was like, you done messed up, Logan. You should have picked Devin. But even in my brain, I'm thinking Logan has a great shot of winning regardless. I think that there was so much talk with Emmanuel uh, about going into the elimination, being so cocky, I was thinking, I think Logan will win this elimination. We get started, the men are going round after round after round. I will say that I thought Logan's strategy was much better than Emmanuel's strategy, as Emmanuel was like sprinting out there and only taking seven seconds each time to do both levers. Logan was taking the more slow, methodical approach that he was conserving more energy and that he would be less likely to make a mistake, whereas Emmanuel was just trying to fly through this, going as fast as he could. Then we get to the point where they did so many rounds at 15 seconds and nobody made a mistake that TJ dropped the time down to 10 seconds. So now you do have to pick it up. This elimination really tested your endurance, but also your focus because it's such a simple elimination. Any little thing and mental lapse could really be the make or break in this elimination. And even Logan was talking about how Emmanuel has great stamina, but if he can just make one mistake, that it would open the door and Logan could win this. Now we do a few rounds at 10 seconds, and there was points where Logan seemed to be like stumbling over the rocket. And I was thinking that that was like a red herring that, oh, it looked like Logan was gonna fall, but really maybe Emmanuel like doesn't flip the lever all the way on one side, or he does trip over something, or he gets too cocky, or he does like mess up at one point. However, it is Logan that messes up because he is running back to pull the second lever and he trips on the rocket, falls down to the ground. Now I will say that it doesn't seem like Logan was trying to like pick himself up and try to like flip the lever back over. When he falls, he fell and he just laid in the dirt and that led to Emmanuel winning the time reaches zero. So Emmanuel wins his first elimination and Logan loses. He played a fantastic game, making it this far, winning multiple eliminations, winning some dailies. Alas, he could not make it further and beat the rocket. So Logan is eliminated and Emmanuel is addressed by TJ saying, congratulations, you won and you get to stay in the game. Rejoin the group. Then TJ says that there are 10 agents left but we are in the lair. And what do we do at the lair? We eliminate people. And he talks about how that there will be two more elimination games happening 
in this layer. So it's safe to say that one man and one woman will be leaving the game at the beginning of next episode, and then we will start into the first phase of the finals, but everybody is shocked by this twist. I was pretty shocked by this twist. I thought we were gonna have like a team switch or TJ was just gonna be like, all right, I'll see you guys soon. And people would be like, what about the finals? What about the finals? Nope, not this time. This time we're talking about, we're gonna get another elimination. We're gonna get two more eliminations. Double elimination happening next episode. Legit cliffhanger. I wanna see what's gonna happen next, but we're gonna have to wait and see. what do you think about the daily challenge? what do you think about the elimination? Logan's choice to go up against Emmanuel. The agency vote to put in Logan as the compromised agent instead of Emmanuel. And what do you think is gonna happen in the double elimination happening next episode. Let me know anything and everything. What do you think about this twist? Was it a good twist? Did you see it coming? Did it hit you out of nowhere? Let me know anything and everything down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. While you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button. I'll be back really, really soon with more Challenge 37 content, more challenge content, more content in general. But until then, peace.